talking about our profitability and our sensitivity in this process. So this is really the more interesting part of ours if you didn't like cost estimation. Uh, so we found an approximate sell price for our PEG recycled pellets to be about 66 cents a pound. This is a joint $2,012, so you don't have to do any inflation on it. And so we get about a revenue of $38 million per year. So if you kind of compare that to some of your guys' industries, perhaps, uh, we're also recycling the entirety of Ontario's plastic with this estimate right now, and we're only getting about $38 million of it per year. So then when we start to look at our expenses, we have our worker salaries, which we previously calculated, about $5 million per year. But then once you start adding in overhead taxes, we have lab fees, we need a shipping and uh, receiving yard for this. We also need a truck away scale for us to know how much plastic we're getting in per day. So once you start including all of these expenses, it really starts to eat into our revenues and makes our profit margin very, very thin. So this really affects our sensitivity analysis then, because once we start to say, uh, we have very little upside to this, this report for our information of plastics in Ontario was calculated about 10 years ago. So there is some expansion that we can assume from this. However, all of our current equipment is currently sized for our uh, current 3,000 kilogram per hour assumption. So we'd have to buy new equipment and we'd have to purchase a new construction fees. So it really diminishes how much we can expand our operation without adding any costs. And then the downside to that is our greatest sensitivity, which is that we have one facility we're assuming in Ontario, but Ontario is a huge province. There's so many recycling facilities. There's more landfills and recycling facilities than just ours. So we have a great risk of having not a lot of that feed actually being generated to our facility. So the feed ratio to ours is really a great sense of Factors. So when we include all these together, we have a very low upside to our possible and then a very likely downside of us not having the feed we want to ours. So that's, it. because of these two factors, we find that often we have situations where our plant isn't actually profitable. So we can kind of offset this with government subsidies and if or when a carbon tax is ever applied, we can also benefit from that. However, without that, we need some other type of benefit to our facility rather than maybe just the income it brings in. And Daniel will talk about this one. Um, by looking at the recycling section of the life of the PVT plastic bottle, um, we see that increased recycling leads to cleaner air, and at its current rate, recycling, um, uh, recyc rate PET bottle recycling results in energy savings equivalent to consumed by 165,000 U.S. households per year. And um, by increasing it by 25%, we would avoid the greenhouse emissions to 131 million gallons of gasoline per year. And um, um, the cost of recycling exceeds its benefits, and this is a simple result of the observation that recycling does not return a financial profit. And um, however, rather than it be determined in dollar signs, uh, what could and could be measured in instead? Uh, we're taking possible measures of reducing, reusing, and recycling, as it causes beneficial outcomes of preserving our natural resources, reducing our energy, and preserving the environment. 
Possibility can definitely mean other things. Sorry. For example, there is a relative significance in landfill and landfill savings as well by providing the foundation of support in creating a stronger and ongoing recycling system. We can all do our part in saving the planet more Thank you. Oh, 
creative features which were used to plus the members of this unit. And that was primarily introduced with bypasses. So I <coughs> in this slide, if you follow the blue line, you can see where in the normal production, the process for the goals were conducted through the collective um, portion, and then through the radiant portion, and then these in the PMID3, or the reactor. Um, Okay, uh, this bypass introduces uh, bypassing the whole fire heater, and this could be used if the process for this particular use doesn't need the fire heater, if we're trying to put it through a different um, or slightly modified process, or if the fire heater is under maintenance or if there's a problem with it.
and we're going to give you some uh, four questions, four PNIDs, and you have to figure out what you have a problem with. So what's wrong with this process? And then we're going to see if you have a reaction. Oh, yeah. 
AMI at our conference. And then for the electrical voltage unit, we actually have to purchase the hydrogen for the electrolysis. Um, so we find out that the price will be uh, $0.22 per kilogram. And then um, for this um, process, uh, what we have as revenue is the metal we sell as from the sludge at the bottom of the bucket, and then we save money from being penalized by the gas. So the inner flow weight we chosen is the minimum flow weight given that it does not damage the pumps. So our cost is relying heavily on the on the storage tank for the flexibility. So if there's increased flow weight, um, the gradient would be stored in the tanks until the flow weight decreases over time, and then the tank will start to empty out. This um this flow diagram is based on the on the flow sheet around the recycle area. So M1 is being the feed to the recycle, and M <coughs> And final would be the, the stream going to the membrane. And this graph shows the number of iterations time it wants to recycle the um, recycle before it reaches the building, which is about five, six times. But also for flexibility, we have um, double our membrane, our ultrafiltrate membrane made it in parallel so that it can handle the increased flow weight and also for maintenance and replacing the membranes we can shut one of them down and then have the other one operating at half the flow weight and having the storage tank filled up along the way. Um, this is also the reason why we double up our storage tanks so that it can handle any increased flow weight for a certain amount of time. The increased flow weight would be based on, uh, based on the flow weight increase minus the the way the system can handle is the limiting factor, the, the ultrafiltration membranes, and the gradient would be built up per hour, and the amount of uh, the storage in the tanks would allow us to store it for a certain amount of time. That would be the flexibility in our system. And above here, you can see that there's a primary separator, and which our group has extensively modified the control, control system that has the NFS safeties. And uh, so by doing the hazard form, our group has found several potential hazards and has attempted to minimize dangerous hazard. And the most uh, dangerous one is hydrogen, obviously hydrogen is flammable and explosive. And uh, firstly, excessive pressure is a potential problem, and this can be caused by a faulty valve opening being too large and creating more hydrogen flow than needed. And uh, this can lead to a fire explosion, as I mentioned earlier. Safety valve to limit the pressure entry the tank and a flare was implemented in case of faulty valve or a control pump. So the flare, so the over here would be flare, not words, that's how it's safer. And uh, if the electrical surge were to happen from the outside source or from the power unit itself, uh, this would also uh, create a danger. And uh, this can be prevented by grabbing the hydrogen, hydrogen in that eye and the uh, electrical issue will Also, SIS sensor will make, as mentioned earlier, will seize hydrogen supply to prevent further damage. And uh, if an output of electrical position device is closed, then this could lead to a backflow to fluid in the hydrogen pipe. And so the hydrogen pipe is made to be a one-way valve, so no fluid can be entered backwards. And in case of an overflow, all all fluids be entered into the sludge so that it will, it will not create a uh, period in our production line. And uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes? Uh, could you implement like a, a level of one to prevent the overflow? <laughs> oh yes, that, I forgot to draw that. Uh, so we, we have a level of a pressure of our end because this equipment is quite dangerous if you use it correctly. So we, this is our questions that we today. Probably we only got one bar, 
so we can't really split it up at once. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to give it to the person who has the most right answer. Oh, we have to write down the answers.
white, but I think she still wins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.